Okay, uh, the names, the nature, the kinds of a prophet, prophets by office, prophets by gift, David, Solomon, Daniel, Ezra, and Nehemiah, and uh, the rest. Now, the nature of inspiration, a prophetic writing. This is a writing that came through the prophets to us. And the written word of God. This book is, according uh, to its authors, uh, over 1,500 times in the Old Testament it says, Thus saith the Lord, God spoke to me, the word of the Lord came to me 1,500 times. It's a book that came from God and is the recorded word of God. Exodus chapter 24, verse 4. Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. Now the critics of the Bible used to say Moses couldn't have written them down because there was no writing in Moses' day, 1500 B.C., now we know the writing goes back 2,000 years uh, before Moses. Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. Isaiah 8, Isaiah was told, take for yourself a large tablet and write. They just didn't speak it orally. They just didn't preach it, and then years later, people remembered what they said and wrote it down. That, that was true of Muhammad in the Quran. He allegedly got it from the angel Gabriel, he originally thought he got it from a demon, uh, and he was demon-possessed. His wife talked him out of that, but he couldn't read or write. It says right in the Quran, I can neither read nor write. Uh, he gave it orally, and then later it was written down. Not so with the Bible. The original authors themselves got the revelation, wrote it down, and then it was stored by the ark, we'll see later, in the holy place. Jeremiah 26.2. Do not omit a word. See how precise the command was? Write it down and don't omit a single word. Every word is inspired of God. All the writing, the graphe, is God-breathed, comes from God himself. John 5.39, you search the scriptures, Jesus said to the Jews, and they, the scriptures, speak of me, and you would not come to me that you might have life. The scriptures speak of me. Jesus said that five times in the New Testament. Matthew uh, 5, you remember verse 17, Luke 24, 27, Luke 24, 44, uh, John 5, 39, Hebrews 10, 7, although in the volume of the book it is written of me, as we indicated uh, in the lecture last time. You search the scriptures, the writings, and they speak of me. John 10, 35, which just happens to be uh, the theme verse of uh, Southern Evangelical Seminary, the scripture cannot be broken. Uh, singular, the scripture cannot be broken. One of the most powerful verses in the Bible. In these two verses, 30, 34 and 35, there are four phrases used in the Bible. Torah, the law, the word of God, scripture, the writing, and unbreakable. This book is the unbreakable written Law of God. Uh, that's what we mean by inspiration. First uh, Corinthians 2.13. It always amuses me. Uh, critics will pick on certain books in the Bible and they say, oh, Paul, Paul was just giving his opinion there, you know. And he was talking about uh, this and that. He was just giving his opinion because didn't he say, not I, but the Lord? Well, here's a book that begins with words taught by the Holy Spirit. Even in that very chapter, he says, I have the Spirit, and he signs off in chapter 14 saying, we'll write to you as the commandment of the Lord. Does that sound like that was just his uh, personal opinion? No, he's writing the very words taught by the Holy Spirit, plural. Every word comes from God. Every word is important. Ma Matthew 3, 4, uh, and uh, Matthew 4, it should be uh, 4, 4, 7, and 10. Uh, it says, it is written three times there. Now that phrase, it is written, is used 92 times in the New Testament. And it's almost always in the perfect tense. Uh, it was written in the past, and it stands written in the present. It came to us in the past, past action, with continuing results in the present, and it's still the word of God today. Matthew 4, 4, 4, 7, and 4, 10. And... Um, 88 more times in the New Testament. It is written. Luke 24, 27. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. 
the two disciples on the road to Emmaus and Jesus after the resurrection approaching them. That must have been a great uh, sermon. Now, I don't know what he said in that sermon, but uh, what I said last time was uh, something like what he must have said because he went through all of the scriptures uh, pointing out how in the Old Testament it looked forward to him. The New Testament looks backward to him. In the Old Testament, he's concealed. New Testament, he's revealed. Anticipation of the old, realization in the new. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Revelation 22:18. Do not add to the words of the book of this prophecy. John was a prophet. He calls himself a prophet. Says he's giving a prophecy because every book of the Bible was written by someone who was a prophet by office or by gift, including the New Testament apostles and prophets. Ephesians 2.20, the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ being the chief cornerstone. So when we say the Bible is inspired, we mean it's a prophetic writing, and a prophet is someone who couldn't add to or take away and had to deliver it perfectly, and we mean it's the written word of God. That's exactly what God wanted to say. And we mean, uh, finally, what the Bible says, God says. Probably the simplest, easiest way to describe what we mean by the inspiration of the Bible. Whatever the Bible says, God says. Uh, B.B. Warfield, the great defender uh, of the Christian faith back at Princeton University at the turn of the century from uh, 1800s to 1900s, was a great defender of the faith. And he has a whole chapter in his book on the inspiration of Scripture on this very thing. And I'm really just summarizing his chapter here. Uh, what God says, Old Testament, and what, uh, what the Scriptures say, New Testament. In other words, the same passage in the Old Testament, Genesis 12, says God said it. In the New Testament, it quotes that passage, it says the Scriptures say, say it. Genesis 12, and we'll quote it in a moment. Same thing in Exodus 19. God said to the Pharaoh. Romans 9, uh, the scriptures say to Pharaoh. Then sometimes it reverses it. In the left-hand column are what the scriptures said, Genesis 2, Psalm 2, uh, etc., Psalm 16. And when it's used in the New Testament, God is saying it. Well, what God says, the scriptures say. What the scriptures say, God says. There's an interchangeability between what God says and Scripture says. Uh, let me illustrate it by a couple of the passages. Genesis 12, 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country from thy kindred and thy father's house unto land that I will show thee, so forth. But when that's quoted in Galatians 3, 8, it says, The Scriptures preached to Abraham, saying, Well, what God said, the Bible said. Same thing is true of... Uh, uh, the reverse, Genesis 2.24, the author of Genesis, Moses, said, A man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. When Jesus cited that in the New Testament, he said, He, God, said, A man shall leave his father and mother. Well, what the author of Genesis said, God said, because he's a prophet of God, writing the word of God. And if you looked at all those other scriptures, you would find out the same interchangeability. First one way, then the other way. God says, the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, God says. You can't really say it any clearer than that. This book, uh, despite the fact that it was written by 40 people over 1,500, 1,600 uh, years of time, it's the word of God, exactly what he wanted to say uh, to us. Now, what's the result? What sort of uh, book do we get as a result of all of this? What's the result of this process of inspiration. The result of inspiration is that we get a book that's divinely authoritative, imperishable, infallible, inerrant, historically reliable, scientifically accurate, and has ultimate supremacy.